What's up guys, I'm Sean. If you watched my last video, I was able to drive my friend's E46 M3 track car at Laguna Seca Raceway. And one of the major takeaways driving his car was that his brake worked really well. Uh, there wasn't any pad knockback and the brakes were very consistent. He has a four piston big brake kit all around. I only have the six piston big brake kit in the front. And I suffer from pretty bad pad knockback. If you don't know what pad knockback is, check out my video. I did one a few years ago explaining what it is. Um, essentially, the rotors may move a little bit under high G's uh, turning at the track and when that happens, the brake pads knock back the pistons a little bit and that creates a little gap. So now when you get on the brakes, um, your brakes may feel a little bit more spongy and it will be very inconsistent. Now there's a, a little band-aid at the track that you can do is left foot tap the brake before the major turns, which I already do. But after every turn, tapping the left, uh, tapping the brakes with your left foot gets a little hectic. So today I'm going to solve my uh, pad knockback issue by making my rotors fully float and also adding some anti-knockback springs behind the pistons to help uh, minimize the pad knockback. So I'm not going to show you how to remove this or reinstall this uh, setup because you can find those instructions at StopTech. But I am going to show you how I'm going to convert my standard uh, rotors to full floating and how I'm going to add anti knockback springs into my calipers. Here's a little trick from keeping your brake fluid from leaking out non-stop. Keep this reservoir cap closed so it remains sealed and put something um, like a pipe or stick to hold down the brake pedal. And as you can see no, I'm not losing any type of brake fluid uh, from the lines. So this I'm spraying a little bit of WD-40 or if you have PB blaster sprayed in there because we're going to basically remove the hardware. So I reached out to StopTech, Zeckhausen, and Bimmer World, and all of them mentioned that it's okay to basically flip the washer and make the rotor fully floating. What I really should be doing is buying new hardware, but because I'm reusing my rotor, my rotors are still good, I measured it. I'm just going to reuse the hardware and then when these rotors wear out, I'm going to get new rotors and new hardware. All the mounting hardware is loose. So basically what I'm doing is I'm going to remove this bolt and if you look at this washer, it's like a dome washer that's kind of like this. So this is the anti-rattle kit but it doesn't allow the rotor to float. So StopTech said all I have to do is get this dome washer and flip it this way so it doesn't put force on the rotor so now the system will float a little bit. So basically this is a free mod. So you see this washer right here? I'm basically going to flip it, put it back, and then reinstall the the bolt, all the washers have been flipped and then make sure these this hardware is oriented the right way before you tighten it all down. As you can see these are kind of turned. This one's good, these are good, but this one's kind of turned. So I'm going to make sure that it's all oriented the right way. The torque specs for my StopTech rotors are only 6 foot-pounds, so that's not much at all. Alright, this side's done. Everything's torqued down, and it still doesn't rattle for now. But I'm sure once I bolt it up and start driving it, um, it might start to rattle because it's going to be fully floating. And then now I'm just going to make sure I clean it really well because I have WD-40 all over it. So I'm going to clean it with brake clean and then install it into the car and then do the other rotor. Now I'm going to work on the calipers. These are the parts I picked up from Seckhausen Racing. Dave uh, recommended uh, 4 pounds anti-knockback springs. And you need 12 total. So 6 on one caliper and 6 on the other caliper. And some assembly fluid. So these knockback anti-knockback springs are only about 30 bucks. And this is only about 15 bucks. So it's pretty cheap. With tax and shipping, it cost me about 60 bucks. Uh, I'm going to try to reuse my dust boots and my inner seals uh, to save some money. But if I can't, then I'm going to have to order it. But let's see. 
So now I'm going to put a block of wood here. And I'm going to hook up my air compressor to this hose and blow out some of the pistons. So I got one piston out via the compressed air. So this one popped out first. The other two didn't. So I'm trying to pull the other two out by hand, which is nearly impossible to do. And I already ripped this dust boot, so I think I'm going to have to order another one. I managed to pull out the rest of the uh, pistons on this side using a little screwdriver and using this bracket as leverage. And I put it on the lip of the piston and slowly pried it up. And again, on the lip here where the um, dust boot goes, you definitely don't want to scratch or mess up the piston at all. But where the dust boot goes, it's okay if you just use a little bit of leverage and pry it straight up on this lip. As far as the inner seals, um, sub TV you want to replace it if yours is leaking and definitely replace it. But I might not mess with it because I don't want to create more problems. But I know I need new dust boots. The dust boots rip really easy. It's actually really hard to, to get out. So what I found that was really useful is using a really, really thin screwdriver, sticking it in between here and slowly prying it out. But obviously you still want to avoid uh, scratching or nicking the, um, the piston. Um. Make sure the piston goes back where it came from because they're different sizes. I'm going to install it like this. And when you install it, make sure it goes in flush and smooth so it goes down evenly okay, I put a little bit of assembly lube it's different than the actual um, brake grease for like the guide pins and they don't recommend using brake fluid so I didn't mention after I removed all the pistons I cleaned the inner bore and I double check the uh, inner seal to make sure it's still good. With the knockback springs, it kind of knocks back a little bit. I did a little bit more research about running without the dust boots and I found out that performance friction, PFC brakes, AP Racing and also the StopTech Trophy Race Big Brake Kit doesn't come with the dust boots. Uh, for one, the dust boots get fried on a track car. And two, the dust boots are really designed for a street car that may see the elements such as rain, snow, salt. And three, the uh, dust boots uh, make the anti-knockback springs less effective. So right now I'm going to run it without the dust boots and see how it goes. Um, if I have any issues in the future, then I could uh, add the dust boots and replace the seals. So this side is pretty much done. Um, I'm going to bolt it all up and you know bleed the brakes, make sure there's no leaks. Now for your setup, uh, I recommend do your research and also reach out to your uh, big brake kit manufacturer and also reach out to Zeckhausen Racing and Bimmer World and see what's best for you. To recap, the downside of making the rotors fully float is the potential noise on the street and potential hammering of the rotor hats because it floats and when you brake you could hammer the rotor hats making this uh, not last as long and the downside of the anti-knockback springs is that now your brakes are always going to kind of push out and could screw up on the rotors so your brake pads and rotors might not last as long which are both downsides if it's a street car but because this is a dedicated track car I don't really care about the noise and I don't really care about my brake pads scrubbing the rotors a little bit. I mean I won't know if this works uh, until I go back to the track in a few weeks but from all the research all the high-end race type big brake kits run full full floating hardware on the rotors and run anti-knockback springs so there's no reason why it shouldn't work but again I won't know until a few weeks when I go back to the track but in the meantime I have something planned for the rears Right now I'm running upgraded uh, OEM rotors and upgraded race pads and lines, but I'm still running the stock calipers. So I'm about to switch up something different in the back. So look out for that video in the coming weeks. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Please like and subscribe. Thanks for watching.